time. Well, take your Bible and please stand for the reign of God's Word if you're able to. Luke 13. We'll begin reading in verse 6. Luke 13. Begin reading in verse 6. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came sought sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this tree, and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Back in verse 8 says, And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. I'd like to preach a message of title, Doing All You Can in a New Year. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the year that you've blessed us with. And Lord, truly, if we'd all been honest and we could have spoke of many great things that you've done in our lives and the lives of others in 2017. But Lord, as we come to a close tonight of this year, there's a new year before us if you so choose to allow us to have it. And Lord, I believe with all my heart, if you do so choose to give us 2018, Lord, that you desire for us to live for you in a great way. And Lord, I pray tonight that you challenge our hearts in this short time here, Lord, in the Word of God. Speak to our hearts. Help us to see the need that you have before us. And Lord, 2018 ought to be a wonderful and great year for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll give you the honor and glory for us pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. We find the owner of the vineyard coming to receive fruit of the fig tree that is planted in his vineyard. When he gets there, he's disappointed, not by the fact that the fruit was small, not by the fact that there wasn't much fruit on the tree, but by the fact that there was no fruit on the tree. He was disappointed by that. He was prepared to do away with the tree, to cut it down, to get rid of it, because for three years he had come and there had been no fruit on that tree. He come this year and, uh, and he said, listen, there's, why should I leave it here? Why cumbereth it the ground? Why does it take, why should I leave a, a tree here that's taken up space that could be used for another tree that will produce fruit? Let me say something to you. Why should God leave you and me here in 2018 if we're not producing fruit? Because we're just cumbering the ground, taking up space that could be used maybe by somebody else to produce fruit. I could stop right there. That's, that's really the gist of the message. But boy, when you begin to think about it, it's kind of humbling. Why would God leave me here for 2018? It's a very good picture of Christians and churches alike. As God looks at the church, as He looks at Christians' lives, and He seeks fruit for your, from your life, and He seeks fruit from this church. Let me say that there's fruit was produced this past year at Calvary Baptist. There's over 20 folks saved, many baptized. But I believe with all my heart, I, I, you know, I know that the day is difficult in which we live in. I don't think we ought to be satisfied. I think that we ought to say, hey, you know what? We need to, we need to abound in producing fruit for the Lord in 2018. Not be satisfied. And many times that's what happened. It's what's happening across America. Is churches are beginning to get satisfied with little or sometimes no fruit at all. 
And it comes to a point as the Lord comes seeking fruit. To, I mean, let's just, as I said, why should, let's just be real honest for a moment. Why should God leave Calvary Baptist in Marshall? It's an honest question. It's a good question. Why should God leave you and me here? There's one thing that God's looking for out of your life and my life, and that's bring Him honor and glory, and that is done by producing fruit. To lift Him up. To magnify Him. And so He desires fruit in our lives. The purpose of the tree was to produce fruit. Look at verse 6. It says, And He spake also this parable, A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and, notice what, sought fruit thereon. That's why he had it planted. He, it, this wasn't a tree that was planted for shade. It was sitting out in a vineyard. It wasn't a tree that was planted around the house for uh, a good looks to make his house look good and, and, and for shade and you know the aesthetics there to, to make it look like a, a beautiful place. This was a tree that was planted in a vineyard to do what? To produce fruit. Might I say that God doesn't need me and you to make Him look good. And He doesn't need us or Calvary Baptists in order just to, to, uh, uh, to comfort somebody and give them to shade and to shade them from reality uh, that, there's a, that there's a heaven, that there's a hell, there's a, there's a lake of fire and there's a heaven to be sought after and, and there's an eternity that will be spent somewhere. He didn't put us here to hide that and shade people away from that. He put us here to produce fruit. We're not just to look good by producing some type of social good works. And a lot of churches and a lot of professed Christians are about social good works. And I'm not against good works and social good works and that, but... That's what many Christians and many churches are all about it. But that's not what we're here for. We're not here just to look good. We're not here just to provide shade and comfort. But we're here to produce fruit. In John chapter 15, beginning in verse 1, it says, and this Lord speaking here, He says, I am the true vine, my, and my Father is a husbandman. A husbandman is the you might say, the keeper of the vineyard. And every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. That's so we're to abide in Jesus Christ. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. And boy, we can stay there forever. The fact is that we can't do without Jesus Christ. But if we will abide in Jesus Christ, we can produce fruit. He says, If any man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and it withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. And in verse 8 he says, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. And John 15 and verse 16 says, And ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. And notice why he says, That ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. And so he's looking at you and I and he's saying, you're to produce fruit. You say, well, <laughs> I don't hardly know what my fruit is. Am I, a, you know, am I a peach? Am I an apple? Am I a cherry? What am I? Well, if you know Jesus Christ is your Savior, you're a child of God. You're a Christian. And the fruit that you will produce will be other Christians. By inviting, by sharing your testimony, by encouraging, by strengthening, 
Now, you may not be directly the one that leads that person to Christ, but you're going to have an influence in people's lives for Christ. And sometimes you may not know exactly who it is that you have influence, but I guarantee you there's going to be some fruit in your life and, and people can see it. Not only that, but the fruit of the Spirit because God lives within you. And that fruit of the Spirit comes forth. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. And on goes the list of, of spiritual fruit that is produced in your life. And that fruit should come forth. But if that fruit's not coming forth, there's a problem. Not with the ground, but with the tree. Not with the husbandman, the one that takes care of the tree, but with the tree. And so we look at our lives and we look at the church and God desires fruit of Christians' lives and of the church. So we see that importance to the Lord that you and I produce fruit. Not that, but when a tree or a branch or a vine did not produce fruit, we notice that it was removed. Look in verse 17 of John, I mean of Luke 13. And he said unto the dresser of the, of the vine, and he said, Behold, these three years I come and seek fruit on this uh, fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And so... The husbandman there, or the owner, the one that, or not the husbandman, but the, the owner, the landlord, the one that owns that tree, that had it planted there, he said, if it's not going to produce fruit, cut it down. Cut it down. He said, why cumbereth it the ground? Why is it taking up space? Why is, it, why is it there and, 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 and where we could plant something else and something else could, could produce fruit for us? We find there in, in John there, he's talking about, he says, In every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. You know, I don't want to be removed for not producing fruit. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be removed for not producing fruit. Nor do I want to see our church removed from the blessing of the Lord for not producing fruit. And tonight you can go from church to church, even in this town and across the state, and in many churches, they're nothing more than just a gathering, and nothing is happening, no souls are being saved. No lives are being changed throughout the year. And, and, and basically, Ichabod has been written over the door. You say, Ichabod? Yeah, Ichabod, the, the terminology that's used for Ichabod, the description of the, if you, if the word Ichabod means the glory hath departed. And in many churches tonight, there's no fruit being produced this year. There's no fruit being produced, no souls being saved, no lives being changed. The Lord's not being glorified. And Ichabod's been written over the door. The glory hath departed. They'll come, they'll sing the songs like what we sing, they'll have a message, they'll pray, and nothing happens. God's hand's been removed. One of the scariest things in my life is that God would remove His hand from me or from this church. I fear that more than anything else. Because then the church and myself, we're useless. And we might as well be taken home. I don't want to see that happen. There should be a great desire in our hearts for the Lord to use us and to use Calvary Baptist to produce fruit in this new year. That will be a stirring in our heart. Say, Lord, we, we've seen fruit this past year. We've seen souls saved. We've seen lives changed. And, and we've seen some things in our own lives and, and in the lives of others. And, boy, we just want to see so much more. We just want to see you do great and mighty things again, Lord. We want to see you do greater things than we've ever seen before. There will be a desire for that. I remember a few years ago, a fellow, he had, he had some um, uh, blackberry, some tame blackberry bushes. 
And uh, he, I said something, we was talking one day, and I said, man, I, I, I kind of like to start them and, and you know, blackberries, because I mean, those things, blackberries was like that. Big old, huge blackberries. And um, so he gave me some of them, and, or, or, or started, I think it was just one sprig of it, and I, I got that thing started, and, and the next year went out, you know, and everything was watching it, boys, and I don't want to see that thing produce it. And I, it put on two blackberries. I think it was two, two or three. It was two blackberries, I think. And they were. They was that big. And I knew that, yeah, it's the first year. It's not going to produce a lot. Of course, if you know anything about blackberries, they put down a, a, a runner, and, and then they got some more come up. And, and the more you get, the more blackberries you're going to get as that thing begins to, to grow and everything. And, of course, then we took the church here. We moved off and left my blackberries. <laughs> but I got two blackberries out of it. My hope was and my desire was is it was good to see those two blackberries, but man, I was looking forward to the time that I could pick enough blackberries. Man, I, you could make a cobbler. God looks at your life and looks at my life and he says, oh, good. He said, but let's see if we can get a little more next year. Let's see you produce a little more. Let's see you be more fruitful than you've ever been before. The seed produced more fruit than you did the previous year. And, and because it brings honor and glory to the Lord and it changes lives. There was a purging and a pruning that, and work done to the vine and to the tree to get it, them to produce more. And one of the things that you do with a vine and some of those things like that, you have to trim them. You have to cut them back, back. back. And we find there in John 15, it says, And every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh it away. But notice this is in every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. He looks at your life and maybe there's been a little bit of fruit and so he may allow you to go through some difficulties. He may allow you to go through some struggles or there may be some things in your life or my life he says, hey listen, I want you to get rid of that so that you can produce more fruit. Now some people, and years ago we started doing it when we would have gardens, we would sucker our tomatoes. Plants. Some people do that and some don't. And generally the whole purpose behind suckering a tomato, you say, what's that preacher? You get down and suck on the tomato? No, 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 no. You have in where the where the, the, the shoots come up like that, you'll have a little sprig come up in between them, like this here. And what it does, it'll rob this out here. You may have the blooms out here and have the tomatoes out here, but you'll have another one come right up in between them like that, and it's called a sucker. And what it does, it sucks the life out of the rest of this. Otherwise, a lot of the nutrients is going to grow this and still go into the, the tomatoes. And so we would go through and we'd just reach up and break it out, break it off, break it off. And it makes your tomatoes nicer, makes them bigger. The whole thing is this. God looks in your life and sometimes He has to sucker us. There's things in our lives that keep us from producing the fruit that we could produce. And so he wants to go through your life and remove some things that's keeping you from producing more fruit. You're producing some fruit, but he wants to, you to produce more fruit or even better fruit. And so he goes through and he begins to work in our lives and sometimes it's not necessarily always difficult. It may be uh, he convicts you about this or this in your heart and life and he wants you to change it and he works in your life uh, according to whatever it is he's trying to do. It may be that he begins to stretch you into a ministry or something and causing you to have to study the Word of God or causing you have to get more into the Word and, and maybe to pray. And basically what he's doing is he's causing you to produce more fruit. Since we've been here, I could stand here, and I'm not going to go through it, but I could stand here, and, and God has, has done exactly that. He has taken some of you, and He has expanded you, and you become more fruitful. You may not realize it, but He's stretched you, and there's some things that He's doing in your life and, and, and cause you to step into ministries and stuff like that and stretching your life and causing you to produce more fruit. And so that's what He desires in your life and life. And so there will sometimes that pruning was... To remove those little branches that are draining the nutrients from the main branch. And so he does that in our hearts and lives. But we also see there that in verse 8 says, And he answering said, Lord, 
let it alone this year also until I shall dig about it and dung it. And basically what this man is doing is he said, I'm going to go where that tree is. And he said, around the outside edge of it, he said, I'm going to dig around it. I'm going to break up that ground. And then I'm going to take, and, and this, and, and dung is, you know, I'm sorry, I, 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 I'm from the south. It's manure. And he takes the manure, he takes the dung, and he works it into the ground. And so that it's around the tree. And so that it begins to feed that tree. And causing that tree to become stronger and more vibrant. But he had to break up the ground first. It, it wasn't good enough just to put the manure or the fertilizer or anything on top of the ground. Around it. He had to break up the ground and work it into the ground around it. Otherwise the rains would come, it would wash it off. And it wouldn't remain there. He might get a bunch of grass. But he's working it into that tree. He's trying to get it specifically to that tree. God tells us that we are to break up our fallow ground. Otherwise, fallow ground is hard, unworked ground. He said, break up that fallow ground in your heart and life. Allow God to, 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 to uh, put the right things into your heart. Put the right things into your life. Allow Him to, to begin to, to, to do things in your life. But if you've got a stony and hard heart, it's not going to go in. Every person here, we ought to have a humble heart. Soft enough so that God can get our attention. Soft enough that we'll say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Soft enough so that we're willing to say, you know, Lord, I'm not where I ought to be. Lord, I, I haven't produced fruit like I ought to this year. Would you, would you help me to grow this year? Would you help me to produce fruit? I don't know about you, but that is the desire of my heart in 2018 is to produce more fruit for God, to see Him glorified in a greater way. The desire of my heart is to see Calvary Baptist to produce more fruit. And my friend, understand this. If, if I can produce more fruit, and if you can produce more fruit, man, what would happen? Oh, God can get glorified in a great way and magnified and, and lives changed by just us producing more fruit. So we're to break up that fallow ground. We find that we need to get our compassion back for souls for the new year in breaking up that ground. Too many times we become hard-hearted and we've lost our compassion for lost souls. And we no longer care about trying to get the gospel out. We're not trying to reach people like we used to. Can I be honest with you about something? Can, can, as, as your pastor, let me just be real honest about something. A lot of the times when we have, and I understand some people can't come when we have someone. But you know what? It's got in the past year where very few people will show up on Saturday to go out door knocking and tell people about Christ. Can I tell you why? You've lost your compassion. You've lost your compassion. Yeah, you don't want to see them go to hell, but it doesn't affect you like it ought to. It doesn't affect you. I wish, Brother Jim, I wish there was some way tonight I could reach over Grab a door and flop it back. And every person in this auditorium could look down into the pits of hell and hear the weeping, the wailing, and the gnashing of teeth in hell. Young and old alike. And cause us to realize we've got to keep people from going to a lake of fire. And the only way it is that we can do that is we've got to have a compassion. You say, Preacher, what are you talking about? I'm talking about caring where people spend eternity. Not just doing it, you know, not just inviting to say, well, you know, the preacher gave me a challenge card. I'm supposed to invite somebody. Do you know why I'm doing that? I'll get wrong with you. You know why I'm doing that? Because you probably wouldn't do it if I didn't give it to you. And sometimes when you get it, you still don't do it. 
I'm just being honest. I'm supposed to be honest with you. Even if it hurts. <laughs> because I'm talking about 2018 in a few hours. That the hand's going to come around. 2017's over. And 2017 is sealed. And every person in this room one day will stand before the Lord and we'll give an account of 2017. We need to get our compassion back. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Compassion. Caring about souls enough to give them gospel tracts, to invite them to church, to tell them what Jesus Christ has done in your heart and life. In Jude, verse 22, he says, And of some have compassion, making a difference. Making a difference. We need compassion in 2018. We need the vision of, a, of the keeper that, that was of this vineyard here. We need that vision that he had. Here the, here the, uh, the, the, the owner, the, the one that, that owned the vineyard, he come and he was ready to cut the tree down. But look what the, what, what the uh, husbandman did. Look what the, the keeper of this vineyard did. He said, and answering said to him, Lord, let it alone this year till I shall dig about it and dung it. You want to say, give me, give me one more chance with it. Give me one more year with it. Let me see if I can get it to produce and, and get it to do something. And, and I believe with all my heart that sometimes God looks down and the Holy Spirit, God says, <clears throat> nothing's happening. And I believe Jesus Christ looks and the Holy Spirit says, give us one more year. Let us dung it. Let us work on it. Let us dig around it. And see if we can get them to produce fruit. But there comes a time. It says. Nothing's working. And God says bring in the harvest. Cut down the tree. So we need that vision. In 2018. The vision of of trying to do more to, to, in our lives and in the church to see souls saved and lives changed, see the Lord glorified and, and see ourselves grow spiritually. That man had a vision, still had a vision, a desire to see the tree produce. We need that vision for this new year. In, in, in Proverbs 19, or 29 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. And one of the reasons that we need the vision that, that we're talking about here is so that souls can be saved and, and the Lord can be glorified and so that lives can be changed. We need a vision of reaching young adults. We need a vision of reaching the teens in our area. We need a vision of seeing more people saved. We need to see a, vi a vision of the church growing spiritually uh, to have a great impact and an outreach in this area and around the world. The vine dresser was going to be personally involved in trying to get the tree to produce. Look what he said in verse 8. And the answer said to him, Lord, let it alone this year also. And notice what he says next. Till I, till I shall. Folks, you haven't bought a preacher to do your work. I'm going to tell you that right now. A lot of people think that the preacher's to do it all. Preacher can't do it all. I have great responsibility like everybody else. But we're all, every one of us are responsible to work that vineyard, to, to get the fruit to produce in our lives and, and in the lives of those around us and in the church. It's all of us. Amen. It's an individual mandate to you and to me both. Nobody's exempt from it. We can always look for someone else to do something, but we're the ones that's got to get involved in the work. We, it's, I've got to pray. You've got to pray. I've got to invite. You've got to invite. I've got to be, I've got to be faithful. You've got to be faithful. I've got to work. You've got to work. I've got to witness. You've got to witness. All of us. Every single one of us. 
I, you know, some of you, I don't know how many of you in here have ever done any trot line fishing. Years ago, when we lived down southeast Missouri, I, I used to do some trot lining. And basically, it's this. You have, you know, you can go out to, and you can put your rods out if you want to, and you've got a few hooks out. But we used to go out and, and we would string a line, we'd put a weight on the end of it, and we would have, I forget how many hooks, uh, they've changed it, but I forget how many hooks you can have on that trot line. And man, we would put all the hooks we could on that trot line and, and still be able to use our rod and reels. But we would load that thing up and we would bait that. You say, why did you do that? So we would have a better chance of, of catching more fish in a short period of time. There'd be times we'd go down through there and you, you grab hold of that trot line over here where you had it tied up at the bank. We'd be in a boat and man, you'd feel a thing. So there's something on there. You take that thing, you start pulling your boat like that there. And you get over here and bore something down there and you pull that thing up, be old catfish on there. Take dip net, dip him up, get that hook out of there. Man, there's still something on there. You go down a little ways, you pull it up, might be a big old turtle. Say, so what'd you do with him? Kept, well, maybe I better not tell you. <clears throat> we go on down. You feel another one down there. And you might, off that trot line, you might get, just overnight, you might get four, uh, uh, three, four catfish off of that trot line. Why? Because you had more hooks in the water. If only one or two people are telling others about Christ, yeah, the word's going out. But what if 50 are inviting and 50 are telling others about Christ and 50 are giving out gospel tracts? Man, you got a greater chance of seeing souls saved and lives changed and seeing fruit. Many times we miss out on the fruit that God wants us to have because we're letting somebody else to do it. We all must catch the vision for the new year. The vine dresser added something to the ground. He added dung to it. And he answered and said to him, let, Lord, let it alone this year also till I, dung about it and, or, or till I dig about it and dung, dung it. He was going to try and feed it by putting dung in the ground around it. He was, he was adding nutrients to it. There, there's some things that we need to add to our lives and walk with the Lord if we're going to be fruitful in this new year. There's some things that you and I can add to our lives to make us more successful in being fruitful for God. Add some joy for the things of God. Hey, listen, some of you in here, honestly, I don't know if you enjoy anything. I think you do. But man, you ought to tell your face about it. And let your face know once in a while. I mean, add some joy. Who wants to be a part of something that's dead and humdrum? Man, add some joy. Enjoy being saved, man. Add some joy and telling people what Christ has done for you. Add some joy. Amen. Add some excitement about the Lord and the church. Add a hot heart for the things of God. I mean, get your heart stirred up. Add more of His Word into your life this year than, than you have in the past. Add desire to please Him. Add to your relationship with the Lord. Then finally, press toward the mark uh, this year for the Lord and, and, and to see God do some great and mighty things. He told us over there in Philippians 3.14, He says, I, Paul uh, uh, speaking here, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 2017 is over. Just a few hours. And if the Lord allows us to, we'll have 2018, or at least some of it, hopefully, to press toward the mark. What's the mark, preacher? Producing fruit. Produce fruit. Glorify God. See souls saved. Grow in the Lord yourself. Too many Christians go through year after year and they just float. No change. If you was to be honest with yourself, and I'm closing. I know we got fellowship here in a minute. But if you was to be honest with yourself, 
Have you grown more this year than you did last year? Compared to where you was at on December the 31st, 2016, and where you are tonight, December the 31st, 2017, have you grown? Have you produced some fruit this year? If not, I'd start digging. I'd start adding some things. I'd get a vision. I'd ask God to do something great in my life. I'd ask God to use me. I'd ask God to just get all over me. I mean, and just work on me. Man, what an opportunity. I'm looking forward to 2018. How about you, wife? Amen. Amen. To see what God wants to do. We have a choice. I'm tired of people blaming everybody else. Man, wake up, grow up, and do something. Let God use you for something that will last for eternity. Let's pray. Maybe tonight you want to come, just find a place. And say, Lord, I want to dig down. Lord, I want you to help me to grow. And I want you to produce fruit in my life. And I want to see great and mighty things in 2018 if you give me 2018. And God, I want to see you take and bless the church and see the church grow and see souls saved and, and, and see the Lord magnified in the church. Let God have His way tonight. Let's just let her play, Hunter, a song. And, and you let the Lord have His way. Maybe you won't find a place here at the altar or maybe where you're at, but let the Lord have His way tonight. As she begins.